Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for our lesson. Thank you for the weekend that you took us through. Thank you for the gift of life. And now we pray that you'll bless our class and bless our discussion today. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Now, like I said, this today is going to be all about it's going to be all about your presentations, and we're going to go group by group. Um Yes, group by group. So I know Jacinta and, and Heather, your group you presented last time. I had given you some comments. I had given you some comments. Wait, well, did you make any progress? Have you made any improvement to your work, from, to your work since then? No. Okay, Jacinta says not yet. All right. Okay, so we shall go to the next group. So I'm just going to follow these groups as I'm, 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 I'm hoping you all have seen the same list that Heather has sent me. And I'll take it, I'll call the first group, group number A, and I'll just name you like that, in that order. So I'll go to the next group then. All right, so Sophie, Kimbabazi, Jeremy, Al, and Kevin. Okay. Oh, I could do this another way. All right, first, if you're ready to present, you can put up your hand and you present for your group. All right, so first, let me first have those who are ready. If you came ready to present. I only had three of you present last week, so I expect many more of you to be ready to present today.
Oh, I have nobody else ready to present. Um, Amza, you can remind me what your group did. You are a group that presented parental involvement, right? Amza, did you present last week? All right. What advice were you given? Amza, you can unmute yourself and remind me what. You told me we are still trying to get yourself ready. Okay, I advise you to do more literature review, all right. So to answer your question, if you presented last week, you people were here at that time, I remember. Right? I've, if you presented last week, you don't have to present today. Okay, Jeremy, you can you can share your screen or you can first, Jeremy, unmute yourself. Do you have a question or you want to share your screen? I would like to share my screen. All right, you can go ahead. Afternoon, everyone. It's okay. The first time we, we had issues doing the work, mm. and I remember I asked you about it, and we, we had to change the way we did the work. All right. So we decided to focus on why homeschooling is not widely being adopted in Uganda. Yes. Well, introduction, we have our problem statement here. The emergence of COVID-19 pandemic led to a nationwide lockdown, which included closure of all institutions of learning. Uh, due to this, other forms of learning had to be adopted and implemented, or for example, homeschooling. So regardless of uh, challenges brought about by COVID-19 and the benefits of homeschooling, homeschooling is still not being widely adopted in the country. Our research focuses on discovering the reasons as to why homeschooling is still not being adopted widely in Uganda in the country. Okay, that, that sounds a good problem statement, just that you did have it at the start. You bring it as background first and then problem statement, but that reads right. Yes, you can continue. Okay. For our background, on March 18, 2020, the President of, of Uganda ordered the closure of worship places, suspension of social and political large gatherings, and closure of schools as an early measure to mitigate the spread of COVID-19 in the country. So this was followed by a nationwide lockdown after Uganda recording her first COVID-19 case on March 21, 2020 which extended until October 2020. With COVID-19 still posing a deadly threat, schools had to remain closed 
and alternative modes of learning had to be developed and adopted, among which included homeschooling. Homeschooling, also known as home education or elective home education, is a type of education um, where. Okay, join me just a moment. Um, you make sure you go back and put in the the citations. Pardon? The citations in your work are missing. The citations. Yes, referencing, yeah. The, the citations, someone else was supposed to add them and haven't shared with me that document yet. Okay. Yes. Okay, Jamie, you can continue. Homeschooling, also known as home education or elective home education is a type of education where children learn outside of a school setting under the supervision of their parents. The family determines what is to be learned and how it is to be taught. It is the hope of parents to provide education that is able to develop religious and moral values in children and provide a comfortable learning atmosphere for children. Many homeschool families use less formal, more personalized and individualized methods of learning but are not always found in schools. Homeschooling, the term commonly used in North America, home education is primarily used in Europe and many Commonwealth countries. So homeschooling shouldn't be confused with distance education, which refers to the arrangement where the student is educated by and conforms to the requirements of an online school, rather than being educated independently and unrestrictedly by their parents or by themselves. Before the introduction of a compulsory school attendance laws, most childhood education was done by families and local communities. By the early 19th century, attending a school became the most common means of education in the developed world. The mid to late 20th century, more people began questioning the efficiency and sustainability of school learning which again led to an increase in the number of home scholars, especially in the Americas and some European countries. Today, homeschooling is a relatively widespread form of education and a legal alternative to public and private schools in many countries, which many people believe is due to the rise of the internet, which enables people to obtain information very quickly. There are also nations in which homeschooling is regulated or legal as recorded in the article. Okay. Um, now, Jeremy, it's, a, yes, it's a good academic practice to put the citations in as you do. Um, reason being, um, remember I told you that when you're writing, it's like you, you, you came and found people talking in the room and now you, 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 you make a summary of what you heard them say. So now, if I, as I hear you reading through this um, background, if there's no citation, I, I, I'm tempted to think that you got that whole paragraph as it is from somewhere, or this something from somewhere. Um, but ideally, like every sentence there should have a citation. It, it makes it, because remember I told you that you have to say who said this. Is this your idea who said this? Is, it's like with every sentence you write, you have to answer that question. Is this my idea? Who said this? Am I getting it from somewhere? So um, I, 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 and I, I, I got what you told me that you expected from your colleague. Um, I, advise, I advise you to, as in your group as you're working, either have this as a Google Doc and you put in everything together. You understand? Yes, Unless it's your colleague who wrote and, and something. So it, I quickly begin to suspect that this paragraph is somewhere. I can find it on the internet because that thing is missing. It, it's, it's harder if you keep the references away. With every sentence, you put the, the citation in, 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 in the brackets. But okay, you continue. Yes, you can continue the aim. Um, join me, it's okay, you may continue. Okay. 
Okay, Jeremy, are you still there? Oh, did Jeremy drop off? Or did I drop off? Is anybody else in Jeremy's group there? Oh, Jeremy, what happened? Okay, Sophie, you share. Currently, I'm using a phone. I don't have a PC right now. Oh, okay. So, how are you planning to share? You can you have you have the things in your mind. <laughs> you know the aims and objectives. Oh, Sophie also dropped off. Okay. As as Jeremy gets back, I think he'll get back. I'll listen to him later. Any other person who's ready to share? <laughs> Nobody else? I'm I'm sure you're there. Can I have some hands up for any for the next group that's ready to share? Okay, Clarissa, you may present. Clarissa, are we, we ready? You can present. You put up your hand. I hope that means you wanted to, to present. Yes, um, I'm trying to share the screen. Okay. Oh, um, I believe we can all see this. Can we? Hello? Yes, Clarissa, we can see. Yes, so um, my group, we decided to look at the viability of homeschooling. So viability is like, in summary, in the title, we're going to look at the prawns and the crons of homeschooling and we see if we should push forward or not. So that's all my, that's my title summarized. As you can see, we're doing it in my angle. And um, so the introduction, we all know 
COVID came like in 2019 and by 2020 we were all worldwide, we were shut up and we were all told to go home for our safety and yeah, for our safety. So with that disruption, we all know education is very important in any situation that it's indicated in the constitution too, like we all have right to education. So with that, we look at how we're going to keep our students in class, like still learning, but not physically harmed for their safety. So our introduction basically is all about the virus and then talk about homeschooling, what it is, home education, just the name says it all. Here we're learning, homeschooling is also known as home education. So with homeschooling, we are home, but we are still learning, we're finding alternative ways using technology around. So um, homeschooling basically is education of a school age child at home or any other place but school. So it's usually conducted by a parent, a tutor, or an online teacher. The thing is we should not confuse homeschooling and long distance learning. Right now, homeschooling, I think the best example would be children in pre-primary because since the lockdown, they have not had any break to go back to school. So as a parent, I have my daughter, let's assume I have my daughter who is six, she's supposed to be in P1, school has not been opened at all, but I want her to continue learning. So I'm going to get her tutor and that all in all will be online education. So um, our problem statement, here we look at students in Uganda, yes, as we saw in the introduction, they have been locked out of physical class. So um, the resource disparities, um, like resource differences. Our study is based in Namayingo district and it's remote. So our main study is because I have lived and interacted with the students and the people and seen the life of those in Namayingo. So um, our problem statement eh, is to look at the disparities and see how to like reduce them between those in rural areas and urban areas. So when we look at, just find a solution to either proceeding or dumping online education. So um, that's our problem statement. And then we look at the background. Okay, so, Clarissa, before you, before you proceed, um first first go scroll back up to the introduction yeah so oh. back up. okay first your title looks looks like clear looks like you've scoped it out um and and i it, it made it gives the impression that okay you you you, you're clear on what you want to do. Um, however, when you come, your problem statement is not um, clear or kind of at the problem statement you have diverted from what the title is saying. Uh, you um, have- So this part of um, Uganda, I strictly put it to Namaingo. No, that's not the part where I'm saying you've diverted. Mm. Uh, when you come to resource disparities between rural and urban, okay, you have concluded, you see your title makes it appear like you want to find out if homeschooling is viable. When you come mm -hmm. to a problem statement, you're saying that you know resources are a problem. You see, research is not a thing you do um, when, when you have the answer. When you do, to do research, you put yourself in the place that you want to find out an answer. Not that you are assuming the answer or you know where the end will lead you. You want to find out is homeschooling in Amayango viable? You, you're not yet concluded that resources are a, diff, are a problem. Am I making sense? Do, yes, am, I, am I right in that? Yes, if, and I've taken note of it. Okay, you, you go to the problem, you continue and, 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 and I see how it sounds. Okay, um, 
So our background, we're just looking at homeschooling. Yes, homeschooling has not begun. It didn't begin in 2019 or 2020 or today. It came from way back and several studies have been conducted on homeschooling. But this is a different situation. Like here, we are literally all forced to take up homeschooling. So as we can see, when the president decided to close the schools in March, so even those that were not open to homeschooling have to adapt to it and grow and fit into it. So like it's like the only, it's like the biggest option we have as per now. We can't just sit home and wait till the situation gets done. This could be the new normal for us. So um, our aim, like the overall aim is to get a solid, like one answer. Like if someone says is homeschooling okay in Namayingo and you know, people either agree with it a yes or a no. So our aim is for us to get that. You know, these things of guesswork, perhaps it could work, maybe it will not. Let's try and see, like it's not guesswork. We want to get a clear answer to this. So um, our objectives, of course, the main objective, we look at stakeholders in our education system. A stakeholder, you know, a student, education can take place without a student, a parent or a teacher. So our objectives are to help these stakeholders, you know, get a clear picture on their decision-making on homeschooling. See if we should take it up or not. So to be specific, our objectives, of course, our, our title is to the viability. So if you want to know if something is viable, you're going to have to find out the positives and the negatives of it. And then after we find out the positives and negative, our next objective is to assess. And then also, in case there are any disparities, we're going to try to find a way to reduce them. So um, our research question and hypothesis, that <laughs> hypothesis. So our okay, so Marissa, uh -huh. just a minute. Uh, before you proceed, um, you just go back to your objective. Objective. Yeah. Okay. Now you see what you, what you said that you want to find out if it's viable. Mm -hmm. That is is a better open statement as opposed to your current wording of support the stakeholders. What you put there as objective is would, what would have been significance that if you find out the answer, it will help in making that decision. Okay. But we, yes, so the wording, the, the previous one of saying, you want to find out how viable it is, that's more general and it's more open. And then I commend you, your specific objectives are specific. The, the cause um, class, these, what I like about this group's um, specific objectives is that they are a breakdown. Like you heard from how Clarissa was explaining it, just seeing that to get to this answer, this is the breakdown of the steps we shall follow. And if we have all these little pieces answered, we can have our big question answered. So I liked that about your specific objectives. Um, now, your fourth specific objective is not in line with your research question. You see, it says to reduce the disparities. You don't have the power to do that. You understand? Because mm -hmm. that fourth one means you're going to give some money. You're going to do something. You're going to do things that you cannot do. So you, I'd, I'd, I advise you to remove the fourth one. It's off scope. Does that make sense? Yes. OK. Um, so we come down to our research questions and hypothesis. So um, our first research question is to find out the benefits. Like, yeah, then we shall see if it works. Can homeschooling work? We have to answer that question. And how is the homeschooling experience? Because at the end of the day, 
you're not going to force students to do homeschooling if they have not enjoyed or feel worth the experience. So that question must also be answered, like how is the experience to them? And then also um, how or how is ICT helping in homeschooling? As per now, we're doing um, more or less distance learning and I'm using a device, a computer device. So at the end of the day, ICT must come in and we see how it's helping or how can it help? Because there is no limit. There is always finding how to do things better and better each day. That's why our fourth question, that's why our fourth, the fourth question comes in. So um, our hypothesis, generally, you, you all know what a hypothesis, like it's not proven, but it's something that people assume. So um, for those, not, now I mean, best in my language is the rural area. So most people will just assume this homeschooling thing is just for those people in urban centers. For us in the village, like we can't do it. Like we even have no way of beginning it yet. I'm not been open to any what, like options or going through it. Then um, also the second hypothesis is for homeschooling is for the extremely wealthy. You know, there are those big, big, flat, fancy, fancy homes in the main goal. So these people think it's only those ones that can afford homeschooling without even making any research or question. So um, our methodology, we are going to use the triangular approach. So we shall largely use the surveys. Surveys also involves questionnaire. You know, I can write down questions, go in the field, ask a group of people, a group of students or be individually. Then our next research method we shall use ethnography. So ethnography, this really works because currently I'm in the Mango district. So I get to observe, to see how things are done, the, the cultures, because culture is also involved in all this. You know, if you are coming from a culture that says, I'm just giving an example, women are not to go to school. So such a culture, you can't just come out from nowhere and say, you know what? The girls, you're doing something wrong, the girls must go to school, but the girls are okay with not going to school and so are their parents okay with not going to school. So um, with the ethnography, we get to study the culture. Are these people rigid? Are they willing to adapt to homeschooling? Hmm? What ways forward? Or they just said, you know, if the president closed, we all sit home till he opens. So we also get to look at those cultures and the various ways, just the lifestyle of those in the Mango district, then we shall also do the numerical methods. Because remember, our topic, we are looking at the variability. So we must also do numerical methods to see those that agree and those that disagree so that we can get to weigh and know which option, what, what do the people prefer? So we, have, we should also get the target number, um, those who prefer homeschooling should be at least like 70 for it to be adopted. I'm just giving an example. And then, yeah, you should like, have a number. That's how it brings us to the numerical methods. So um, we come to our research timeline. As we all know, every project, everything must have a timeline. So for us to get our answer, we decided to go with um, our research time to be completed in 10 weeks. It's just an estimate. So we have our introduction, um, how long shall we cover it, our aims and objectives, our research question, the conclusion and submitting. And yeah, the references. Thank you very much, Clarissa. Um, now, the research questions and hypotheses, it's not like every research must have these things. Um, if you have like now you with your objective and with your, um, your specific objective, the work is clear. If you add in the idea of getting the hypothesis, um, it means you're going to have data you're collecting, it's like you've proposed 
a research that appears qualitative and you want to go about it quantitatively. Um, and that's why you think of having numerical methods and all, but it's okay. For now, you can leave it like that. Just remove the research questions. There. Okay. okay. Thank you so this, much. The hypothesis. Why I'm, 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 I'm seeing that you may need to remove a hypothesis. The way you state it, you need to have variables. It has to be clear that you're going to capture this and capture that and weigh it. Hypothesis works well if you want to see cause and effect. Did this cause this? Does this affect this? Because um, remember I said the hypothesis has to be researchable. Um, so um, I, would, I, I would say first either shelve them as you, what you have under your research questions are more like things you want to do some literature review on. They will feed into your data collection. Um, when you say that you're going to use um, ethnography, from your explanation, I get it. You say you want to observe. It's better you see that, that you're going to use, uh, mm, OK, ethnography. Uh, it is still so big. But okay, for, for now, at least remove these numerical methods. Yes, remove the, the word numerical methods because it's um, you use it if you have a mathematical um, situation. Um, you want to observe, you're going to use observation. Okay, you can leave that one. But okay, thank you. At least I can see your, your, your work is fleshing out well. You're making progress on that. Uh, Clarissa, any of my comments clear? Yes, they are, and I've taken all to notes. Yes. Um, bear in mind class, you know, research is interesting. When, when I look at your work, I give I give you know thoughts and 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 um what I see quickly. Um it could be that if you have after you've done some more literature, you can make something more clear in such a way that it would, have made, it would make more sense then. So when I say shelve it, that's why I say shelve it. Just put it other side, do some more literature. You see, for example, Clarissa may find it easy to be able to um, spell out a hypothesis after you've done some more reading and some more digging around. Does that make sense? Yes, so I say, That's why I use the word shelve it and, and just, Keep, keep now reading and keep fleshing it out. But this, this is good work. I can see you, 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 you applying the things you are learning and you, you're mapping out the research plan, which, which looks nice. Uh, uh, Hamza, you cannot like have your hypothesis as a question. Remember we said it's a researchable statement. So it should just be a statement. And not a question, because it's more like has your suspicion or it has your hunch. So it is a statement, but in it, it should be researchable in the sense that it should you should see what is affecting what or what things are you going to look at clearly. So it, it, it doesn't just appear vague and broad. It is a statement. You want to see if there's a relationship between any two things. You want to see if something is affecting the other. That's how it is fleshed out. Hamza, do you get my question? Okay. Sorry, did I say get my question? Ah, you get my answer. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Clarissa. And Clarissa's presentation has brought to mind something I didn't actually factor in, but people are actually out there. Yes, many times I, I encourage students methodology put around Kampala. Hey, Clarissa has brought it to my mind that people are actually out there in this place. Nice. <laughs> yeah, it, it is sinking in. <laughs> it is slowly sinking into my head that, oh, you people are actually all over, Kamp all over Uganda. So you can actually do, you can collect good data. So thank you for that, Clarissa, because mostly I was going to advise you do online surveys, but no, you don't have to actually do online surveys. You're actually going to collect data, which is exciting. 
if you do some good work, you could actually be able to write a paper. <laughs> yes. So let's let's have some other group. So that's why I encourage you use Google Docs because you can collaborate online. You don't have to send emails to each other and have that WhatsApp group for your group that you can discuss on your group work. Okay, so can I have some other group presenting? Joan, you had, you had sent me a private message, but you can share your work as it is, and I can still advise you. Okay, so you can go ahead and share. Clarissa, you can stop sharing so somebody else can share. Sol, I can see your hand is up. If you want to share, yes, you can go ahead. Um, you, but if you want to share, you will share after Sol. If you have a question, you can ask it before Sol starts. Okay. Um. So after oh, when you began sharing, you you lower your hand. After you, you put up your hand, if I if you see that I've acknowledged your hand, you lower it. So may you please lower your hand? Okay, Solomon has asked me whether the research is only about homeschooling. No, it isn't, Solomon. Um, I gave many topics on Muele. You can check them out. Just so that two people so far chose to look at homeschooling. Remember I said that the, the research is it's about interest. Otherwise I would have wanted, for example, if any of you could do research on, on just how people are managing or how they're taking up the, the secondary school curriculum, how it is going. Over the weekend I had, I had a student complain about it that it's just bad. So I would be interested to find that out. I put that topic there. I haven't seen any of you was presented something along that line, but there, there are topics in there. Or there are research areas, you can choose whichever you want. Okay, so what happened? Did you drop off? Uh, so it sounds like you're not audible. Oh, does that sound? And the thing is that we are not hearing your voice. 
See if you've not muted yourself. Is it only me? Can we hear so? No, Sol, we are not hearing you. So you maybe you 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 muted. Well, have you tried to use your device before for this? Does it have a microphone that works? Okay. So is anybody else in your group online? Okay, Anes is advising you to unmute yourself, Sol. Okay, so Sol, you're together with your group mates? All right, that is, that's good. Okay. You try, um, let's see if you're muted. Okay, you can see you're unmuted. Um, so if you're with somebody else, could you try to connect with some other, so either with your mobile phone, you connect Zoom and then you, you share with your laptop. Since you're with your group mates, you can do that. Because either, either your laptop, its microphone doesn't work or something, we just can't hear you. All right, since you're together in a group, then I, I suspect one of you should have a smartphone. So you can connect Zoom and you speak on that other on the smartphone.
Saul or Apollo? Um, are we waiting for any of you or you've all dropped off? Apollo, you're still there. What's going on? Okay, if Saul and, and, that, and that group can't make it, any other group that's ready? Hello. Okay. All right, now Saul, we can hear you. Yeah, it's like we've got a general problem here. Oh. I think our base station has some issues. Okay, it looks like you've managed the issues. Oops, so on, on our computer, it can't connect now. What can't connect? We are just, we losing, just losing packets. It may go off even now. All right, you try and we see. You share uh, the screen and we see. Okay, um, Gilbert is ready. Gilbert, let's just see if... Since Saul was almost near. All right, so let's first give Gilbert a chance. All right, it's fine. Yes, okay. All right, Gilbert, you, you can go ahead and share. All right. Good afternoon, madam. Good afternoon, Gilbert. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I am fine, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, this is my presentation, our group's presentation. And uh, okay. the title goes like this, Homeschooling as a Solution to Solve the COVID-19 schools closure challenge and right. our objectives uh, first it is to ensure continuity of uh, children's studies parents actively participating in education of their children understanding the understanding children behavior by both parties here we mean the teachers and parents uh, improving on student on student personalities. Um, okay, before Gilbert um, continues, does anybody see something? Gilbert, Gilbert has presented something that I have mentioned before. Does anybody notice something there? Right. Okay, Clarissa wants yes. Clar Clarissa, what advice would you give give Gilbert? Um, his title, basically, it's not like he's going to research. It's like it's already an answer there. So his okay. title is like it's going to give the solutions of homes. I don't know of homeschooling, but the title is not really a research thing. Okay, thank you, Clarissa. Um, Lois, uh, sorry, I'm trying to pronounce that name right. Help me pronounce it, please. It is Lois. Lois, okay, yes, Lois. Another vision I've made about Gilbert's work is the organization of the of his concept paper. Okay. You're not supposed to start with object. Okay. Okay, thank you, Luis, for that um, comment also. Luis, thank you, you may, you may lower your hand. You know, it helps me when, after you put up, lower. It helps me not dis get distracted. Thank you, Luis. You're welcome. Sophie, you want to say something? Welcome. Um.
Ronald, um, I have not understood what you are saying. I don't know if it's time to Gilbert's work or something, but maybe let Gilbert finish and then you shall unmute and, and raise your question and make it clear. Oh, it's not time to Gilbert's work. All right. So Ronald, you, 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 we shall discuss that. Let Gilbert finish. Okay. So class, bear in mind why I want us to have this presentation so that I, I want to know that you got you understood the things that you know we learned and you're applying them. So don't don't be bothered if you get some comments, research is like that. You keep improving as people discuss your work. Okay, you but you may continue to the background. Okay, thank you very much, madam. I've realized that I think I had a mistake on my title plus the organization of the concept paper. I think the problem was objectives coming before the research background and I've finally noted them. Thank you. Um, okay. Now I get to the uh, to research background. Um, here we are talking about what are we actually going to look at in our research which is homeschooling. And uh, we give a definition of where children's education is best at home with, with their parents' guardians rather than uh, like the actual education that we have been having. And uh, uh, basically yeah, yeah. it is conducted by whoever that can. What do I mean by whoever that can? Uh, the parent, a tutor, could be uh, a, a brother, whoever that can contribute to that child education. Uh, I don't know why my screen is not moving. It seems stuck. Uh, following the outbreak of COVID-19, Gilbert, what you may try to do. Education system worldwide have been significant. Yes, doctor. Yes, I was saying, Gilbert, what you may try to do, you could, you could try to share again, as in first stop your share and then do it again and see if your screen will respond. All right, thank you. Yeah. Uh, it's fine now. Thank you. Um, I'd reached uh, on the background where after defining what homeschooling is, and here I'm looking at uh, uh, what is the background of uh, homeschooling? Oh, how is it coming about that we are here uh, talking about homeschooling? So uh, the, the most significant cause here has been COVID-19, where we are seeing that almost 1.7 billion learners, this is according to, to OECD 2020, as cited on the, uh, in my presentation, uh, that uh, over 1.7 billion learners, including 99% of students in low and uh, lower middle income countries that have been affected by this COVID-19. Uh, we see that uh, uh, parents as well, they have also been affected uh, financially and psychologically. Uh, uh, that, that, uh, in these hard times, finding that uh, uh, regardless of everything, uh, a kid does continue studying. They have to, they, they do not have to, you have to find all ways on how your kid can continue studying. Uh, be it uh, uh, hiring teachers, uh, getting online journals, uh, data, buying smartphones for kids. Uh, like uh, a kid in all ways, you're not going to be stuck uh, as your kid as well but rather find a quick solution on how they can uh, maintain this space. So by all this, uh, parents are facing financial constraints, not only financial constraints, also psychological, that you're thinking about what to eat, but also your kid does continue uh, learning. 
that also affects you psychologically. That means you must stretch. Yeah, the brain won't rest. Um, uh, just, say, yes, madam. Now you yes, see many of those sentences you're saying, you are not getting them from literature. You're getting them from your ideas, not? Yeah, I'm like just saying. It has been the experience. Mm, uh, I think, mm. like, uh, I'm explaining that as you see that these ones are cited sentences. Mm. I, I don't know if I'm supposed to expound the cited sentences. No, what I mean, eh? mm. like, for example, when you say parents have been affected um, financially and psychologically. Mm. Of course, we, 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 it makes sense. Yes, mm. but mm. It, would, it, would, it would be better if you had any literature that supports that. Now, if you don't have any literature that supports it, let me say it hasn't yet been researched anyhow. Yes, mm. yes. then it, it is a, it's a possible, it is a feasible um, research something to find out how parents have been affected. You get what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah. Yes. So, because I'm, I'm trying to pull out for some of you who are looking for um, what to research. You uh, see, with, okay. yes, research, you do not like, let me say, you make your conclusion or your assumption, and then you say that is the conclusion. No, even if now that is just it, you just want to find how have parents been affected financially, socially, relationally. So, you go do research, you interview parents, and they tell you. Then now you come back and tell us, yes, parents have been affected. You have got new knowledge. It is as yes, easy madam. as that. Okay. For example, that, that sentence you're saying that, okay, government has purchased radios. Okay. Just finding out how effective that was, how the learners found it, what was the issue with the radios? Would they be able to get the programs in the right time? So you interview, say, okay, what programs did you, what subjects did you, were you able to listen to on the radio? You, and you get answers. What subjects were missed? So I'm just trying to tell you that you made a number of assumptions or things which sound like they're logical, but with research is we want it to be researched and want data to tell it to us. Mm. So right there in your paragraphs, you have enough things to expound on and do research. Does that make sense, Gilbert and, and class? Yes, madam. Yes, madam. Maybe yes. Uh, one more. Oh, can I ask? Yes, please. Uh, does this mean that I, like, I chose a, a very wide topic because uh, I find a lot of things falling under this topic uh, of homeschooling? Yes, that is why that is why we why why we have scoping. You understand, and that is why this we're having this discussion. So you can go and now fine tune and fine tune, and you finally get down to what it is that you look at. Okay. Yes, those those what I put with, within Muele, they are just to guide you. They are as broad as they can be, just to get you thinking, and you just go on any angle, something to work on. But finally, you you flesh it down. Okay. Yes. So you can continue. Okay, thank you. Now, be, for example, now when you see, when you begin and you say that even if parents want to get involved, uh, but there's literacy. That is now um, having it being told to us by the data makes it more powerful. Or is what research is. Okay, so All you right. can continue, yeah. Thank you. So now go, but where, which district are you in? <laughs> For us, we had just picked out uh, a whole topic, like the whole oh. thing without uh, a specifying. No. Okay. Now maybe since you, but you have, can I suggest you flesh it down again a bit? You shall present again. Yeah, that's that's okay. Okay. All right, Gilbert. Thank you. Thank you for your corrections. Okay, you're welcome. Um. Okay, Lydia, you're ready to present. Oh, sorry. Before before Lydia, you present. Um. 
All right. Um, consumer feels like, um, okay, consumer have noticed your, your, call, your message to me, but since Gilbert has seen, he's going to reduce and scope it a, a bit better. So he shall next, uh, he shall present again. Well, look, um, I expect an improved version next time. Okay. So let's, let's have Lydia. Madam, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Lydia. How are you? I'm fine. Yes, please. You may go ahead. Where are you? Now, <laughs> now I have to ask which part of Uganda are you? I'm in Wakiso district. Ah, nice. All right. Are you seeing my screen? Uh, yes, we are. Um, yes, we see you trying to open your, your laptop. And you. under the Lagos member, then the hypothesis. No, not yet. We are not yet seeing that. We are seeing that your laptop is somewhere in the research method, in the folder. You share the screen, you share screen and move to the PowerPoint. All right, it has helped me being able to see in Lydia's folder. I'm saying, Lydia, where are the slides on the workshops? And the workshops? <laughs> yes, I put those slides on Mwele for you so that you can be able to get those other video links. And if Madam, you're I haven't just gone links, back. Yeah. Okay, fine. So you share the PowerPoint. Um, share screen Madam, to I don't have the PowerPoint slides. I have only the word slides. It's okay. You share the word. I was only I was only telling you that your your screen it was still within the folder. You share if it's Word or it's PowerPoint, whatever it is. Are you viewing it now? Um, not yet. All right, now we can see it. Oh, our hyper. First of all, those are the group members. Yeah, our research was based on, okay, that would be a hypothesis, is what are the impacts brought about, what are the impacts brought as a result of homeschooling in Uganda during the COVID-19 pandemic? Our abstract, I divided it, in, I divided it into different categories. First of all, the background, the research method, objectives and others, you will be able to see them as I scroll down with time. First of the background, can I read for you? Hello? Yeah, I'm here, I'm following, you can read. Mary searched mostly about the abstract. Okay. Now, um, yeah. Lydia, maybe what you call that is background. Remember I told you, or maybe you're not there in that class, that abstract is the summary. So for now, I don't expect you to have anything called an abstract as yet. The abstract comes at the, at the start. It's a very fast, but it summarizes a document. So it's okay, you, you, you remove that word abstract. You are at the background. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes, madam, mm. I'm going to remove it after. Okay. My background is as, due to the prevailing situation of COVID-19, that has been a plague and a disaster in the whole world. Lots of countries, including Uganda, have been a, vict a victim in which they have been hit badly economically, socially, and politically. Based on the reports from the Ministry of Education and Sports and the Ministry of Health in Uganda at large, the COVID-19 pandemic is said to have started from the beginning of 2020 up to, up to date and has greatly affected the, the education sector in a way that the government of Uganda 
opted for a quarantine and a total lockdown of all the activities that were going on in the country, including the daily working of the parents who are supposed to settle down and the closure of schools. In this way, many schools resorted to the introduction of online classes in which the parents of the students were required to help the students on their studies so as to pursue their goals amid this COVID-19 pandemic situation. Then the research method okay. that we use. Um, Lydia, just one thing. Again, I'll advise you like I advise, I think it was Jeremy, the citation. It's much easier. You, if you train yourself to to put the citation as you start, so you don't have to look for where you got this thing based on the Ministry of Education, blah blah blah, or whatever. You need to have the citation right there when you're writing. Okay, madam. Yeah. Thank you. So you don't look for things. Okay. I'm going to include them also after. Okay. The research method that we used, we used a survey method, which involves the using of Already? Yeah. Oh, you already collected data? Yes. Oh, you're planning to use that? I think you're planning to use that. <laughs> mm, because then I'll begin to suspect that you, you, you're presenting to me other people's work. I expect that mm -hmm. you're still planning. You're going to, you're still planning, still and then we're going planning. to make this data. Okay. Okay, madam. We shall use the survey method. A survey method, it involves using the different questionnaires which are given to different categories of, of people. For example, in this sec, we are going to, we are going to, based on the district, for example, Wakisa district, which is in the central part of Uganda, then some five districts. For example, Kamwangi and Kabaramaido, which are which are from the different, which have the different standards of living. So as you can. Okay. Um, Lydia, now, yes, um, why did you choose these districts? I chose first of all the, uh, the central district. I think they're a bit well off. They have some good school. Which yeah, ones? Then, like Wakisa district. Okay. Yeah, Lua, Lua lost somehow. Okay. Then I decided okay. to choose Kamwenge. Kamwenge and Kabarmaido district. Because these districts, they have the biggest number of UPE schools. Yeah, and that standard of living is not that well off. All right. Now, um, before you put uh, the methodology, we, we should have the objectives. Yeah. Um, yes, my dad. So you, you, you move that up. Um, then um, what you're trying to do, you're trying to sample. When you try to say with these districts, you're trying to you're trying to sample. So now um, you need to. Okay, I've had your good reasons. What you just explained is more like purposive sampling. It's saying that Kabiramaido has uh, the largest number of UPE students. Okay, I, I I like that. That sounds like good a good reason to purposively sample. Because remember, there are so many districts, so that is a good a good way to go about it. Um, I'm yeah. just concerned, or I'm hoping you can actually achieve that goal. You don't mm -hmm. tell, yeah, you do, like you don't tell lies. Mm -hmm. Okay, but now before we come to the methodology, let me see the problem. What is the problem? The problem statement. The problem statement. Yes. And I've asked based on the benefits mostly. The benefits. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. I, I, I like that. You, 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 you're not looking for problems. You want benefits. <laughs> okay. So now. Yeah, um, problem may be there. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so now let not the word problem statement make it appear like. 
you need to we just need to know um the motivation okay yeah i know there's there are some cases where by problem statement sounds like it is just being problematic for no reason there is a benefit mm -hmm. but you go back and i see what what it is because there has to be what is motivating the research that's what problem statement is also like what is motivating the research what do we want to know what do we want to find out so what is it that we want Yeah, fine. Our research was based on the benefits, fine. Yeah, but there is some problem statement somewhere. Okay. Now, again, all right, let me say it this way. What is the question? The question mm. is what are the benefits of homeschooling, okay. both positively and negatively? All right. Now you cannot have negative benefits. You get it. A benefit has to be positive all the time, not so. Okay. You get it. But if you want to find what is the impact, what is the effect, that one can have um, both positive and negative. Ronald, you're asking me why? That why can't you have a negative benefit? Is that the question, Ronald? Yes, that's the question. Ah, all right. Anybody in class? Is there anybody in class who thinks you can have a negative benefit? Okay. Um, the thing is, a benefit is positive by definition of the word benefit. It's a good thing. Mm. That's how come I'm saying you cannot have a negative benefit. However, mm an effect of something can be positive or negative or an impact of something can be positive or negative does that make sense yes madam yes so why so, yes Renard. Renard, are you in the same group with India? no you're not okay thank you Madam, my question is that we, we, have benefits. we have benefits, but a, a benefit, my benefit can be a challenge mm. of a mm. negative one to someone. For example, the COVID-19 mm. pandemic, it is a benefit to some people, so it is, mm. it is a negative benefit to others. That's what I'm trying to bring out. Ah. Okay, then if it is a benefit to some, it is a challenge to others. Just like they say one man's meat is another man's poison. It can't be both meat and poison in the same mouth. Just that, that same thing, to some it is good, to the others it's bad. Rona, that's the kind of situation you're trying to explain that, that it, it, to some it is good, to some it is bad. To those whom it is bad, it is bad. It, they cannot call it a positive benefit. It is a problem. To those to whom it is good, it is an opportunity. It's more like that word when you have a situation whereby for some it's a problem, to some others it's an opportunity. Ronald, does that make sense? Yes, it makes sense. Yes. Yes, that's, that's why we have that saying. One man's meat, another man's poison. Right? But to the one for whom it is poison, it remains poison. So you use the word effect, impact. Cool. Okay, what you can do for me, Lydia, just quickly read through your, your problem statement. Lydia, are you still there? Oh, okay. Lydia, we cannot. Um, Lydia seems to have gone off.
Okay, let me see. Lydia has just dropped off. Okay, who wants to present? Joyce. Okay, Joyce, you can go ahead and present. When Lydia comes on, she will present after Joyce. After Joyce, we shall be ending the class. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Joyce. Joyce, are you together with Ernest? No, I'm with Ben. Ben share the screen. Ah, all right. I was seeing a different screen being shared. Or maybe, Joyce, I don't know if you're using um, Ben's device or something like that, or that if that is your image, but it's a good practice to put your face <laughs> so that we can see if that is really Maria Joyce. For now, we are seeing some kind of terrorist. <laughs> Yes, you get my comment. Now, Joyce, somehow. Okay, so that is Ben. Maybe my 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 little piece of advice was for Ben to put the face as opposed to that man or that terrorist man or I don't know what that image is. All right, um, Joyce, try to in increase your mic levels. We are not hearing you very well. Hello, are you guys hearing me now? It looks like you have to shout. You have some background noise. You have some noise in your background that sounds a bit electrical. Something. Okay, I'm going to take this advanced, advanced technology for personalized technology. It is learning. Yeah. You guys are getting it. <laughs> no, Joyce, we are not we are not hearing you very well. Yes, where are you? Where are you? At home. As in, where, where is home? I'm I'm in I see. Okay. All right. Um, Joyce, okay, just try to speak. We shall we shall see if, I, if we can hear what you say. Our topic advanced technology for customized learning. Though I think some person might make that error. Our introduction was running down by a challenge of advanced technology. We'll ask them for simple ways of accessing education without. This study is going to help us create a strong relation. Focus on the technology, like the tangible, the tangible requirement for students to be able to access online learning, distance, or long distance learning. Ben should go on the next slide. Our introduction the problem in March, a COVID-19 COVID pandemic arrived in Uganda, which, which made the president of Uganda to impose a 42, lock, 42 lockdown. Oh, OK. Um, Lydia, since we are not hearing you well, 
um, if only you could say clearly like what the question is you may now spare us a little bit of the background you may spare because we are let me read let me first read it in countries like north america online education is nothing new okay distance learning was born and now online classes there's something about that sentence there i just Okay, um, now Lydia, what you may do, okay, summarize for us the problem because um, you need to improve on the wording. Yeah, you may need to sit together as a group and you see how to improve this wording so that it, it, it sounds, when somebody reads it, they get, you get a point. Because I've tried to read and I'm, I'm, that one sentence has knocked me off. Eh? And so in countries like, America, online education is nothing new, okay? Distance learning was born, and now online classes are just modern version of their humble predecessors. Uh, it looks to me like you're trying to say that in America, they have been using online for distance learning for a while. That's what you're trying to say. Yes. See what you're trying to say? Yes. Okay, then you, okay, so then you have to say it in a better, in another way. So your, your challenge, just tell me, okay, the problem. Oh, or go to the part that has the problem. And I see. Okay, Lydia, what we can do, can you find your other group mates? Ben, can you, is it Ben? Lydia, who else is in your group? Ben. Ben, Ben, can you speak? Are you in a better place? Then you also can't speak. There is Irene. Maybe she can do it. Okay, Irene. Can you speak? Okay, Lydia, for now, um, I, I am struggling to see um, how your work is, is going. Oh, but from what I'm seeing, if um, I, I can say, okay, you're interested in ICT and online learning, um, then you can have a problem that says that, okay, I see you put here a few of the unknown, okay? Um, you can have a problem that say that, but while in, within this COVID time, we need to use online um, tools for, for accessing education, there are challenges in there. The research is going to investigate them. 
one of the things you 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 going to see if, if there's fear of unknown issues of access and all, all that kind of thing. So you craft your research around uptake and use of the ICT. Then you scope it down to whichever ICT you, you find that is more used, either the radio or the TV or whatever, because I know you people know that ICT is more than just mobile phone. So you, you, you focus, or you may say that you're going to look at those ICTs, you can see the number of the ones that you look at, and then you find issues around the usage. Um, Lydia, does that help? Does that make sense to you? So you can kind of scope this work. Yes, it's Joyce not. Yes, madam. Oh, sorry, it's Joyce. <laughs> sorry. Okay. Yes, Joyce. Um, okay, so Joyce and Ben, I hope that makes sense. So you can craft your work around there so that we can clearly see what you're going to look at. Have I helped you or have confused you? It has helped. Thank you. Okay. Now, unfortunately, Joyce, because of the poor network, you won't be able to present, but um, for now, you improve on that. What, we shall, what you shall do for your next um, presentation, make sure a group interview that is in a better network place can present. Okay, um, okay, thank you. We have had the number of you presenting this today. Madam, I beg your pardon. I have a question. Yes, you may ask. Uh, actually, I never had the opportunity to ask him, but was present, but there was an objective in his work yeah. which said which said to improve on student personalities. Uh, and, that, and that objective runs back to what you said to Clarissa. Yeah. Actually, I want, I, want, I want you to, okay, to give me a solution. Is it good or, or actually it's not? Because you okay, said so you to that she has, she has to do something to improve the important thing makes him makes her to do something. Now, Ronald, the challenge we are having is that you're asking this question when we don't see the the particular where it's coming from. You get it? It's kind of now difficult for me to place it. Um, I wish you can you can type it or something so that I can get it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes, because now I can't understand what you want. Okay, now Lydia, you hadn't finished your presentation. Um, now we have run out of time. So tomorrow we are still going to have more presentations. Okay. Yes, so um, Lydia and I don't know if Philip, you also want to present. Philip, you wanted to present? Tomorrow we shall have more presentations. If you have not been able to present today, just prepare yourself. Okay, Jeremy, you, you, you also want to present or you have a question? Oh, Jeremy, you had also gone off. Okay, so that's fine. So Jeremy and Lydia, you shall do again tomorrow. Because we have gone way past our one hour. So tomorrow we shall begin with Lydia and Jeremy and then Philip. Okay, so let me um, say a prayer. And then um, we shall continue tomorrow. 
Oh, yes, sorry, Ronald, you had asked your question. Okay, let me first answer that. To improve student personality. Is it or? Ah, all right. Um, okay, Ronald, you're asking me whether that's right um, wording of things. Um, really, it, 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 it isn't. Um, because we can, there's no way we can do that. We cannot improve students' personalities. That can be within maybe psychology and maybe that people of divinity. So that one, we cannot do it. Um, so yes, Ronald, you're right. It's not even just about the phrasing, but it's about even the feasibility. Is it possible to do something like that? And for now, we, can, we, cannot, we, we can't do it. However, the group that I think that was from, is it Gilbert's work? Or yeah, I think it was from Gilbert's work. I'd advise them to go back and improve. So I, I hope to see better work from them next time. Ronald, you just type for me one if you've got my answer, if, if it makes sense to you. Yeah, I've got it. Okay. But how, okay. how, how, yeah. how can we phrase it? How do you phrase it? It depends on what you want to know. What do you want to know? What do you want to do? Ah, uh, Ronald. So there's no way of saying how do you phrase it. First, I've said um, that the issue of saying improving student personality doesn't belong in our discipline or even doesn't belong in what, what we can humanly do because just people's personalities are given to them. So the issue is what does the researcher or what did the group want to know such that we can use other words. So Ronald, I don't know what it is that you have in your mind or what it is that a group had in their mind. I cannot say what, what words to use because I don't know what they want to find out. So I can only answer your question if you tell me what it is that they are looking for. I can say maybe how we phrase it. Let me share their work so that we get the topic as in the heading of their concept paper. But unfortunately, Gilbert is off. Hey, good more. Yes, yes, we can continue this discussion tomorrow. Um, Heather, maybe unmute yourself and because I uh, okay. Yeah. The, the deadline for Moele for this work is today oh, and okay i would beg that you extend it to at least tomorrow so those people who had who have to repeat their work and then those people who are still complaining of their group members they don't know them so that they can also get to do something thank you okay um that can happen Though I'm wondering, I'm trying to understand the challenge you are having with the groups, because I am assuming that since you're all on the same WhatsApp platform, you can easily get your phone numbers. Is that a wrong assumption? Uh, I'm having some retakers okay. inboxing me and then they're like, they can't access their group members. Their group members haven't reported. So I don't know, actually some of them were asking if they can change groups. Yes, what you can do, because if if you had this, you have the, your groups, that document that you sent me. If if that document that you sent me, um, you have it as a Google sheet, and you put that link in the WhatsApp group, so you you get you can get a group. You say retakers. You you say people fill in your name and phone number. Can not that help? So they don't have to even just you put the link there and people can keep populating.
So whoever calls you, you put them in that other group, or they just join that group that is not yet full, that has retakers. Oh, Heather, you went off? Uh, I am on. All right, I, I, I have, that is just my suggestion. Okay, you see how to improve that. I'll see how to attend to your request. But now let me pray. I'll, 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 I'll shift the deadline. Let me pray. Okay, and I told them to talk to you, but I think I, I'm going to talk to them. And then I yes, do the please. changing. Okay. Yes, you just put them in their own groups alone. Okay, okay let's say a prayer and we go. All right, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for our class. Thank you for the work that we are doing in our groups. I pray for understanding. I continue to ask you for protection for the students, for provision, for long life over them and even their families. Thank you, Lord. Um, also for salvation for them. Thank you, Lord. In just name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. We shall meet tomorrow, the same link. Um, meet in the afternoon. Thank you for coming. Thank you.